the final round of this unique FIM Supermoto World Championship, we head to Busca with everything up for grabs in the championship battle. The Circuito Internazionale di Busca is our host and will provide a unique challenge for the riders. This is a compact layout with no dirt section, but the circuit's unique jumps and back turns will make this weekend's racing very compelling. As always, we have tour guides on standby to show us the ropes here in Busca. Let's hear from Click Air Racing's Maxime Lacour and Gaza Racing's Emric Buno. This is a very special section since we normally have an off-road element. Here there is no terrain but asphalt, though we do have a big jump. We arrive very fast, so you have to keep a good line to set up this curve, which is very tight. To not lose too much speed, go outside, but you can pass on the inside. You arrive with such good speed, despite the tightness of the curve. This is where you have to be precise, since it is a very sinuous part of the circuit. You have to keep Keep up the momentum, stay on the line to get out of the turns well, and be fast around these corners. Here we have a peculiarity, this wide sloping curve where you try to acquire great speed, like a kind of propulsion on exit. It's really fun and new for us to take a turn like this. The thing about the trajectory here is that you don't have to climb too much, but try to stay at this height, it's precisely here that we have the maximum compression of the bike that allows us to accelerate a lot and have the propulsion that makes the front wheel rise when exiting to then get to the heavy braking at the end. Pour pouvoir accélérer au fond pour faire un gros freinage. Simply talking about this challenging layout is not enough to grasp its eccentricities. Let's take a lap with Lacour and Buno. Off the line with Buno and into a fast left hander to start the lap. A tight, long right hander follows this first turn, and you can see that the track is wide enough for some good overtaking. On the throttle towards another right-hand bend and onto the brakes for a sharp turn onto this unique banked section of the track. Both riders choose to take the inside. You don't want to carry too much speed into this jump and this much faster two-lane corner. Deceptively fast on the outside of this left-hander, over the jumps and under the bridge. But don't think it's all plain sailing from here. Back to the main layout, which opens up nicely before sliding into this right-hand hairpin, which looks like a wonderful place to try and make a pass. Opening up the throttle, back down this back straight before slowing only slightly for quite a fast open right-hander. That's followed almost immediately by a tricky little hairpin left. A short straight before this incredible banking, 180 degree corner, so quick around the banking, serious speed and a good run off that banking will allow a chance to pass into this next major braking zone. Little S-bend section here, followed by a couple of more open corners. I think this will be pretty much single file in the races. Heading towards the final right-hand bend. Another braking zone, maybe a passing opportunity. Onto the home stretch, and we complete a lap here in Busca. So then, the first race of the final weekend of this 2020 season. And it's all to play for up and down the order, but particularly between Mark Reiner Schmidt and Thomas Charret. Charret heading the points coming into this race and at the front of the grid, ahead of Reiner Schmidt and Hermanen. Holbacher in fourth, Sitniansky in fifth, and Elias Samartin starting from P6. Uno, Vertimati, and Patrick Pals on the third row ahead of Max Verderosa, Maxime Lacour, and Danile Di Chico. Off the line then, and on board with Milan Sitniansky as this race gets underway. Who has the whole shot? Looks as though it might be Mauno Hermanen finding his way through, and indeed, Hermanen into the lead of the race. This is actually possibly his last ever appearance in S1 GP. 
2013 world champion set to retire after this weekend and he's pushing hard straight into the lead ahead of Mark Greinerschmidt, Thomas Charest, Sitniansky who were on board with there in fourth place and Hermanen then leads the early stages completion of lap one and the De Gasoline Motorsport rider the 131 at the head of the order Schmidt and Charest second and third place Across the jumps they go. Reiner Schmidt looking racy. Is he going to find a way past Hermanen? We switch on board with Sitniansky again. And indeed, Mark Reiner Schmidt is through into the lead of this race. Hermanen now looks one way, looks the other. Sees Charret. And Charret outbreaks him around the outside after the back straight. Great move from Charret into second place. Charret and Hermanen, great friends off the circuit. So always a little bit of cooperation between the two. And it is back to this situation at the head of the order that we've seen time and time again, Schmidt and Charest at the front. And this is the way Schmidt will want it to go. Preferably, he'll want someone to catch and pass Thomas Charest. With a four point deficit between the two coming into this race, it's critical that Mark Reiner Schmidt finds a way not only to control this weekend, but also to see Charest score less than optimal points. Out of that uh, tight left-hander they go and around that incredible banking, such a fast section of circuit. These two just starting to break away, not as much as we've seen in previous events. Permanent in third place hanging with them. Charest, as always, pressuring Mark Reiner-Schmidt. Over the jumps they go. Sitniansky holding strong in fourth place as well with Holbacher in fifth. On board with Sitniansky as they go through the bank section. Where is Lucas Holbacher? We can see a shadow to the, to the right. And that was Lucas Holbacher. Has he found a way through? Yes, he has. Milan Sitniansky there had to really fight the bike coming out of the corner. And that's allowed the MTR KTM rider, the number 72, through into P4. He'll be looking for a podium at the very least from this one, but he's got to close in on Mount Hermanen yet. And look at the speed through this banked section. What a ride. Some serious speed. Another bank section here. Such a unique circuit at Bluska. Charret pressuring Schmidt. He's got to find a way past. I think at some of these corners, it's easier said than done. But if there's anyone who can make a pass anywhere in the world, it's Thomas Charret. Battle for third, still going on there. And in fact, that was Holbacker through into P3. Milan Sitniansky still in fifth place, but the MTR KTM has made it up to third position. So Lucas Holbacker is into the podium contention and Charre looks up the inside and he's made it stick for the lead. Mark Reiner Schmidt isn't going to let that happen quite so easily though. He's looking immediately for a way back pass and he's done it as they come out of the banking and around these S-bends, Mark Reiner Schmidt has immediately taken back the position. That was a short-lived lead for Thomas Charret. That won't count on the lap charts. Sitniansky in fifth, meanwhile, running a fairly lonely race by the look of it. Or is he? There's a telltale shadow beside him. And he's down to sixth place. And that is Elias Samartin. So a little bit of inter-team rivalry among the Phoenix Honda riders. There go the top four. Hermanen still right with it here. Schmidt, Charret, and Holbacher. The main protagonists of this season. Holbacher, unfortunately, probably a little way too far back in the championship order to contend. Unless Schmidt and Charret make some major errors in any of these races. Charret pressuring and staying right in the wheel tracks of Mark Reiner Schmidt. Just over midway through the race. And the Frenchman is really struggling to find a way past. Of course, now he's got to worry about Holbacker behind him as well. I think Mark Reiner Schmidt very much controlling the pace here. Of course, it's convenient for him and deeply beneficial for him. 
if Charest finishes lower than second place in this championship battle. Only three points separate the uh, totals for first and second. 25 for a win, 22 for second place. So the more that Charest drops through the order, the better the chances of a title at the end of this weekend for Mark Reiner-Schmidt. All three of those riders so closely matched. Sam Martin and Sitniansky still having a great battle there as well. The all-black Phoenix Hondas. So well turned out. Great to see Sitniansky and Sam Martin having a good battle there. Uno and Patrick Powell's having a good fight as well. We heard from Emmerich Buno earlier, of course. On to lap 13 of 15 then. Schmidt still trying to hold off Charest. Charest looking to the inside there, but uh, couldn't quite find a way through. Every time he makes a move, he has to be conscious of Holbacker behind him. The Phoenix duo is still fighting, but I think Sidney Ansky may have met his match in Elias Martin here. Still a great run from Sidney Ansky. Hasn't always been this close to San Martin in the 2020 season. Again, just riding through this warp speed banked section of circuit. Really edge of the seat viewing. Speaking of edge of the seat viewing, final lap of the race. And it looks as though Reiner Schmidt is going to hold off Thomas Charret. And he does. It's a victory for the German. Charret second and Lucas Holbacker finishing behind them in third place. Very close race. And the three Phoenix Honda riders there running together. And that's going to be a big momentum swing for Mark Reiner-Schmidt in this title battle. Charest second, Holbacker third, Permanent and Sam Martin rounding out the top five ahead of our camera rider Milan Sitniansky, Uno holding off pals ahead of Lacour and Michael Bertomatti. Yeah, good start. I got to the lead and then got to give it up to Tomo, Mark and Lucas. They are really fast this year and I just can't answer to their speed and always seem to be fourth. With the lessons learnt from Saturday, everyone from the teams to the officials has a to-do list on Sunday morning. And while Schmidt and Charest will be particularly focused on their championship battle, every rider in the paddock has something to aim for this weekend, be it a win, a podium or a top five. And the highly professional crews around them work hard by their side here in Busca. Onwards to the second race, with just one point separating our two title contenders. Race two underway then. Looks as though Charest got a good start around the outside. Is he going to be able to find his way into the lead at the first turn? He is. Reiner Schmidt going around the outside of Hermanen as well at turn two. The two championship contenders not letting each other out of their respective sights for one moment. Holbacker up to fourth place just behind Hermanen. The order streaming across the jumps. Charest and Schmidt leading the way. Mark Reiner Schmidt on the 41 in that second position, and he won't want to be there. He won last time, of course, in the first race of the weekend. That puts him closer to Charest in the championship, and he'll want to take another win here. That's easier said than done. Sidney Ansky, meanwhile, running behind Sam Martin yet again. I think they're re-engaging in the battle they had in the first race. Charest then so rarely held the lead in Saturday's encounter, but controlling the order from the front in race two on Sunday morning. Across the line, they go to complete another lap. Again, no dirt here at Busca certainly doesn't detract from the excitement of the layout. These uh, asphalt banked corners 
really do make for a spectacular sight and a spectacular sight here as well. Buno, Vertimati, Lacour and Pals running seventh through 10th in tandem. The core doing well there on the Seoul Kawasaki, but no one doing better than TM Racing Factory's Thomas Charret. Looks like a move among the Phoenix Hondas. San Martin and Sitniansky in this battle for fifth. Sitniansky trying to find a way through every which way. Of course, San Martin in this unique 2020 S1 GP season has the home advantage pretty much everywhere he goes. Staying within the... Uh, borders of his home Italy owing to the uh, global pandemic and trying to minimize any issues with travel for our competitors and their outfits. Charer and Schmidt on the fifth lap of the race shadowing one another. Herman and doing well here on Holbacker as well. Lucas Holbacker who's often been the third party in the front order just struggling to find his way past Mauno Hermanen at the moment. Hermanen, who, as we said, is looking to ride off into the sunset, both figuratively and literally this weekend, doing a great job. Milan Sitniansky in P6 then, still achingly, agonizingly close to the rear wheel, the Michelin B2 tire of Elia Sammartin. He's not quite able to find a way past yet. Lap 11. And Charer has built quite the gap over Mark Reiner Schmidt. Was that an error on the part of Mark Reiner Schmidt allowing that gap to happen? Or is it just superior speed this morning on the part of Thomas Charer? Difficult to say, but Mark Reiner Schmidt doing a really good job nonetheless to hold on to this second place, but not a good enough job in his own mind, I'm sure because this will again extend the points advantage between he and Thomas Charret heading into the last race of the season. Charret on the final lap then. And the final turn takes the win in the second race of the weekend. And well, that changes things once again in both the championship and the Grand Prix of Europe order. But Charer takes the win. Reiner Schmidt second ahead of Mauno Hermann and Lucas Holbacher and Elia Samartin holding off his teammate Sidney Anski there. Emmerich Buneau holding on to seventh place in that battle we saw earlier. They're tied on points in the Grand Prix of Europe. Thomas Charer and Mark Reiner Schmidt on 47 apiece heading into the season finale. The last race, four points clear is Charer at the top of the table. For the final time in 2020, we're ready to go racing. Thomas Charer, Mark Reiner Schmidt, and Mauno Hermanen on the front row from Holbacher, Sidney Anski, and Sam Martin on row two. Uno, Vertimati, and Patrick Powles on the third row. Fourth row of the grid is Max Verderosa, Maxime Lacour, and Daniele De Chico. Will Mark Reiner Schmidt be able to claim the championship in the final race of the season? Four points separate Reiner Schmidt and Charer of the championship as they get off the line. Who's going to lead the race in the early stages? Mark Reiner Schmidt with the whole shot into the first corner. Takes the lead from Charer. Herman on the attack in third place. We ride on board with Sidney Anski. And look at that. Holbacker wasting no time diving up the inside of Mauno Herman to take third place. Sidney Anski, meanwhile, has found himself behind Elias Samartin again in what seems to be a never-ending battle between the two. But the order at the front then, Mark Reiner Schmidt in the lead from Thomas Charer in second and Lucas Holbacker in third. This is not enough for Mark Reiner Schmidt. If Mark Reiner Schmidt takes the win and Thomas Charer is in second place, the Frenchman will still take the championship by just one point. Mark Reiner Schmidt has been the bridesmaid before and he won't want to do it again, but he's going to need some outside assistance. He's going to need at the very least Lucas Holbacker to get past Thomas Charret, but it's vital for him to take this win. He'll be willing on that MTR KTM in third place. If Thomas Charret finishes third and Mark Reiner Schmidt takes the win, 
German will be the champion. And there's only so much he can control. We're on lap three of the race. Over the jumps they go. So fast. Warp speed by the looks of it as they go through these uh, jumps and these banked corners. All asphalt, but no less challenge here at Busca. Heading towards that banked 180 degree corner, the magic roundabout, if you will. Holbach is still pressuring Thomas Charret. But he's not yet found a way past the TM Racing Factory rider. The seven time champion looking to make it eight in this evening's race. Milan Sitniansky running in sixth position. Elia Samartin just ahead of him, still holding on in this inter team battle. Interesting to see the two at such close quarters. And they have been at close quarters in all three races. The order unchanged at the front, though. And as it stands, if things were to end now, Thomas Charret would be an eight-time world champion, pushing himself even further up the record books. Of course, already the most winningest rider in terms of championships, but he'd only extend that record. Reiner Schmidt in the lead, Holbacker pressuring Charret, looking closer and closer with each passing lap but still not found a way past the Frenchman. Uno and Patrick Powell's having a good battle further back. They've started to break away in the battle for seventh position. Good to see fights up and down the order, but everyone's eyes trained on this top three. And it's almost achingly tense as these top three stagnate in order, but they're pushing so hard. Reiner Schmidt just hoping he can maybe back up Charret into the clutches of Holbacker, but that's so much easier said than done. And if you start trying to slow the pace down in the front of the race, Thomas Charret is perhaps the most likely rider in the world to take advantage. Herman and holding on well in fourth place as well. As we said, looks like he's on his way out of the sport. It's been a great career for the 2013 world champion, Mauno Hermanen. Charret and Holbacker, second and third place behind Reiner Schmidt. We're on the last lap. Can Holbacker find a way through at the final corner? He can't. Mark Reiner Schmidt is going to take the win, but it's going to be bittersweet. Reiner Schmidt takes the victory, but Thomas Charret takes the championship. Mark Reiner Schmidt across the line first, ahead of Charret and Holbacker, Mauno Hermanen and Elia Samartin rounding out the top five in the third and final race of the Grand Prix of Europe and the last race of the 2020 season. Mark Reiner Schmidt taking the round at the very least with 72 points across the three races ahead of Charret and Holbacker. However, he will not be our 2020 champion. Onto the podium celebrations then and you can see a bit of a muted stance there from everyone at Phoenix Racing. Lucas Holbacker will be happy with third place. He's had a good year, made a couple of errors that have cost him dear. And there is Tom Charret, TM Racing Factory rider. Second on the podium for the race, or for the round, I should say. Mark Reiner Schmidt taking the Grand Prix of Europe. It's been such a good year for Mark Reiner Schmidt. He'll be ruining the error last time out in Ortona. But our world champion is Thomas Charret for the eighth time. Yeah, very good. Very good weekend. Uh, yesterday uh, I was faster, but uh, on the, the, the first moto, uh, uh, I make a mistake to do on the start. So I, 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 I start third, I pass second, but Mark was, uh, was uh, faster than me and uh, he closed all the doors, so it was uh, impossible to pass. In the second moto, I tried to, to start uh, to, to, uh, 
immediately uh, on the front and uh, I, I push hard, uh, I won the race and uh, for the, the last race uh, uh, I, I finished second because uh, for, with four, four points on the lead, uh, second was, uh, was good for the title. So uh, I'm just happy, I want to thank all my team, all my family and uh, I, I can say nothing, so just uh, I'm very happy, thanks. A delighted world champion, eight times over, Thomas Charret taking it by just a single point from Mark Reiner-Schmidt. Holbacher, Hermanen and Sam Martin are top five in the 2020 S1 GP season. And there we have it. The FIM World Supermoto Championship of 2020 is in the books despite the difficult year we've all had. And it is this man, Thomas Charret, who is our reigning world champ once again. He has now conquered the world eight times over record breaker, history maker, and surely the greatest supermoto racer we've ever seen. But young talents such as Mark Reiner-Schmidt and Lucas Holbacher are challenging the Frenchman. Will he be topped in 2021? I'm Adam Weller. I'll definitely be tuning in next year to find out, and we hope you do too.